GAC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation. Semi-final Saturday is here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. The Great American Conference Tournament Championships getting ready to get underway. Good afternoon. I'm Joey McWilliams alongside Luke McConnell. Samantha Roop is in the house with us as well. And we are set for four more games today. Day three, the stakes get even higher today. The number one seeded Southeastern Oklahoma State University, Savage Storm, getting set to take on the number four seed in Southern Nazarene University, the Crimson Storm. It's the battle of the storms and we see that southeastern got here with a big victory yesterday over southern arkansas 94 86 southern nazarene with the victory narrowly avoiding arkansas monticello 72 70. we're going to take a break with the national anthem and we will be back in just a moment here on the gac sports network Outdoors, you got to take what nature gives you. We'd like to say we run when they don't. So we want to give you products to be able to run when you don't think you should run, when it's pouring rain outside, it's snowing. We're going to have products for you to get out there. You don't get better sitting on your butt not training. You got to get out there and run. At Under Armour, it's always about premium textiles. They need to perform, they need to be the best the merging of hybrid textiles with naturals and new seaming and bonding and super sleek, modern, fast, futuristic designs. That's where we are really going to turn it up a notch. If you look good and you feel good, you're going to perform better. Back at Fire Lake Arena here in Shawnee, as we mentioned, Southern Nazarene narrowly defeating Arkansas Monticello yesterday, 72-70. That was the final. It was really a coming out party for Terrell Coleman yesterday as he absolutely came alive for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, 28 points, eight rebounds for Tyrell Coleman, the senior out of Bakersfield, California. Just a tremendous game for him. And you see the finger roll there. He was all over the place on offense. Big reason why s &E was able to come out on top in the overtime victory. Southern Nazarene, the starters being introduced right now, and we will get to them as well. For the Crimson Storm coming in 15 and 13, right now they had an 11 and 11 GAC record under first year head coach BJ Foster. The starters look like this, wearing number one, Benno Zetzic, a 6'4 senior guard from Alameda, California. Wearing number 15 is Ben Baker McCann. He is a 6'2 senior guard from Berkeley, California. Number 22 is Jonas Visser, a 6'2 10 grad student. He's a forward from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Number 23 is Cam Slaymaker, a 6'4 sophomore guard from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. And the aforementioned Tyrell Coleman, number 32, a senior guard, 6'3 from Bakersfield, California. And you feel that uh, Golden State connection on this Southern Nazarene roster. The starters for the top seed in the men's bracket, wearing the home white uniforms today here in Shawnee. The number one seed, Southeastern Oklahoma State University, the Savage Storm, coming in 23 and 8 now. They had an 18 4 regular season record in the Great American Conference under 13 year head coach Kelly Green. Southeastern was also one of the co champions in the GAC in 23 24. Number zero, Brennan Burns. He is a 5'10 junior guard from Bethany, Oklahoma. Number one is Cody Cluett, who is a 6'5 junior guard from San Marcos, California. Number 11 is Kyle Leslie, the 6'7 senior forward from Nora, Australia. Number 20. Coming back into the starting lineup today for the Storm. He's been out for a little while. A 6'1 senior guard from Kingfisher, Oklahoma, Jet Sternberger. And number 35 is a 6'5 sophomore forward 
from Rockwall, Texas, Chandler Dickinson. We mentioned head coach Kelly Green, one of the deans in the conference in coaching, recently passed the 200 win mark in his coaching career as uh, the leader of the Savage Storm. It's Southeastern in white, Southern Nazarene in black. The Battle of the Storms, if you will. Savage Storm, Crimson Storm, and yes, at some point in time, I may just say Storm without either uh, descriptor. Just work with me on that one, Luke. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a good one, and this two teams have quite the history between them over the past five years or so. You can expect a lot of offense today and just some really good basketball all the way around. These two teams, as Luke mentioned, have, have not only met and had some fantastic games in the regular season, but in the tournament as well. And it has been Southern Nazarene generally getting the better of Southeastern when it comes to play in March. Southeastern, the highest scoring team in the conference. They shoot the ball well, and they need to, Luke. And one of the reasons for that is because, as Coach Green said, they're not really that great on defense this year. No, two team, both of these teams, not, not the best defensive teams in the conference as Tyrell Coleman picks up right where he left off wow. yesterday with the open three. Dickinson tries to answer within a matter of seconds. Can't do it with that shot. But, yeah, as you were mentioning, I mean, that the, the defense has not been the strong point for the Savage Storm this season. Yeah, Savage Storm, 11th in scoring defense, 12th in field goal percentage, and three-point defense wide open. Ben Baker McCann there for SNU. Well, I, I don't Storm. think they meant to make, give you an object lesson right off the exactly. bat, but yes. And SNU on the other end, 8th in scoring, 10th in field goal percentage defense in the regular season. But they have gotten better over the course of the year as it has gone along. They do do a nice job in three-point percentage defense. Team shooting just under 34% in the regular season against the Crimson Storm from deep. And that obviously a big factor today against one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation. You know, it's one of those things too, and, and of course for, for Southern Nazarene, Coach B.J. Foster in his first season taking over from Adam Bohotch, the, the leader at Southern Nazarene for so many years, Southern Nazarene has historically been a team that, well, their play has been pre predicated on their defense. They've been able to put points on the board well also. But, you know, this is a group that coming part through ha having Coach Bohatch and, and also then under Coach Foster now, they, they do look to play defense well. Shot underneath, no good. And the Savage Storm held scoreless through the first two minutes and 10 seconds of this game. That was Leslie missing on that one. Just about everyone's had an opportunity to misfire so far for Southeastern. Yeah, SNU doing a nice job of switching thus far. That pass just a little off the mark from Zetchich to Visser, but SNU doing a great job switching. Their rotations have been crisp thus far. And I mentioned four of the five players for Southeastern, 0 for 1. Sternberger, the final player to take a shot and miss it. Now every single member of the starting five is 0 and 1 from the field right now for Southeastern. So they've all gotten their first miss out of the way. It could be one of those things to say, okay, now it's when you get started. <laughs> now here's one of those things, SNU, these are all new pieces. They never played together. They didn't know each other before this season. But there's a lot of old guys out here. Zetchich, a senior. Ben Baker McCann, senior. Coleman, senior. Visser, senior. They're, these are old guys, experienced guys. And you see a slip screen there as Visser gets all the way to the basket. And SNU with a tremendous start here this afternoon. Well, they pick up, as you mentioned, just like Coleman did, right where they left off from game number one. Leslie, top of the key, drains it. Three points. Oh, Southeastern is on the board. And Southern Nazarene, Really, what a game that they played against Arkansas Monticello. 4-5 matchup winds up being a two-point victory as Southern Nazarene uh, not only, well, able to hold on, but getting those final two points near the end. And a great job on defense by Clue at that time, not giving up that easy pass in the lane. Two consecutive trips down where there was an easy look, and Kyle Leslie finds the distance as well. And a 7-0 lead for Southern Nazarene has dwindled to a 7-6 lead now for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, with how many three-pointers Southeastern shoots, you know, you always run that risk where that lead's gonna evaporate pretty quickly, but 
SNU just needing to stay the course. They fell to the Sa Savage Storm in overtime back on January 27th, 85-77, game that SNU frankly should have won. Uh, kind of gave that game away in the closing moments of regulation and couldn't close it out there. But so they, they know they can play with this bunch. And Brennan Burns gets the end one opportunity heading into the timeout. But SNU knows they can play, and based on these first four minutes and seven seconds, I think we're in for a good one today, Joey. It should be a lot of points scored and a lot of fun here from Shawnee. Savage Storm on an 8-0 run. Burns will be on the line when we come back. Leslie has found the distance now after his opening miss from inside the arc. He decided to step back a few feet, and he's two for two now. Six points. Brennan Burns has a layup as well. He'll have the and one opportunity as he comes out right now. The Savage Storm on an 8-0 run. Samantha, you had an opportunity to uh, learn a little bit during the break. Tell us what you know. Hey, Joey. Well, Coach Foster, he is happy with the offense, but he's not really pleased with the defense. He says his team needs to get back quicker on defense. And because of this, we're giving up free throws. So we'll see how this plays out now. Burns misses the free throw. Still an 8-0 run, but a rebound for the Savage Storm means it's going to stay on Southeastern's end. And shot clock, is that the case? The switch there. Looks like the, there we go. Shot clock did not start. It goes to 16 seconds right now. So the Savage Storm are going to be the beneficiary of a foul early as Ben Baker McCann was hanging on to on Brennan Baker Burns McCann in the lane. So there's a foul before even another second ticks off the clock. Sternberger inbounds to Burns who get to the middle of the lane and back over to Sternberger on the outside. Baseline and the storm will move it around. Checking into this contest for Southeastern is Robert Briley. He's number 45. Sternberger from the corner. He will miss fire. Briley's a 6'4 sophomore from Wright City, Oklahoma. Baker McCann finds Coleman in the corner. That on the back iron and the rebound to the Savage Storm. A lot of good shooters on this team, but Sternberger there at the top of the key, maybe as pure a shooter as you'll see out there. And Burns takes the shot, but a rebound from Briley in the lane, going back to Burns. Tries to find Briley underneath there, and the Crimson Storm defense will knock it out. 15 seconds on the shot clock now, as the Crimson Storm will see their first uh, replacement, <laughs> their first substitution of the day, as Keyshawn Mason comes in. Mason, a 6'9 junior from Shawnee, Kansas. Coming right into your living room on that deflection by Ben Baker McCann, but Briley able to get the offensive rebound because a bunch of SNU players went for the rebound. Nobody put a body on Briley. Got a body first, ball second when it comes to boxing out. Mason looks like he's going to be the one to get that assignment on Briley, and Briley really came along yesterday for Southeastern, or excuse me, you have to go back to Thursday for Southeastern. Briley. A good effort on the day. Came off One the bench. One second on the shot clock here, Joey. And the inbound quickly. To it from the corner inside the arc. How about that? The inbound play, and just like that, Southeastern now on a 10-0 run. That's an amazing inbound. Yeah, that's a new needing a bucket here to stymie this run. Slaymaker, top of the key, makes the move, trying to get around Burns. Turnaround jumper, rims out. 
Nice look for Slaymaker. It took him a little while to get going in the victory yesterday. Finally found his rhythm for the Crimson Storm. Coming off the give, the go. They're going to look for Kluet again. Left side, that will be a little bit too strong. And Briley going up on the inside. That foul will be called against oh, is it on Mason. It is on Mason down low. Yeah, battling with Briley. Briley doing a great job on the offensive glass, pushing the envelope and also making SNU work inside. For SNU. Landon Meyer checking in for SNU as. Tyrell Coleman sits down and Landon Condiff out there for Sternberger for Southeastern. Starting to need some extra legs too as both of these teams can pick it up and put it down. Burns well outside the arc now drive in step back foot on the line that'll be a long two if it goes it does not and Mason gets the board. Still a 10-0 run right now after the seven quick points for the Crimson Storm. It's been a little while since Southern Nazarene has found a way to put the ball in the basket. A scoring drought of about three and a half minutes now. Baker McCann drives the lane. Nice spin move around McCann. Count the basket. He'll go to the line and shoot again. That's one way to end the drought, Joey. Nice spin move by Baker McCann. Condiff it caught grasping at air as he swiped at the ball. And, you know, you... Obviously, instinct is to swipe at that, but you know, a guy's already past you. Why, why take a swipe, commit a silly foul, and now you're tied again. Very good move on the inside. Southeastern had a couple of good defensive stands after really just not existent in the first three or four possessions for Southern Nazarene. And if you're wondering about the green light for Southeastern, pretty much everyone with a white jersey, if you're on the court and inside the uh, the sidelines and the baseline, you have the green light. Now just one for five for Brennan Burns to start this one. Three-pointer left wing and a fantastic shot by Zetchich. Now that's a big deal. Zetchich just one of nine from the field yesterday in the win over Monticello, four points, but hits his first field goal today. That will be huge for SNU if Zetchich is able to get going. Crimson Storm back on top by three now. Briley underneath, falls away, can't get that from the fall. And you're right, Zesich, and, and it wasn't a bad game, just really didn't uh, have the offense for individual offense going well for him. Yeah, had eight assists with that. One of the best assist men in the conference alongside Brennan Burns. That time Baker McCann drifts to the outside with his shot and the, and the ball comes up a little bit short. Leslie, right wing three, count it once again. Kyle Leslie, three for three from long range. Yeah, a great start to the game for Kyle Leslie. Three triples already in the first eight minutes of the ball game. Again, hot start both ways. Now it's a better day for him. On Thursday, he was one for five outside the arc. Still had 11 points. And Leslie with the steal. Long arms reaching into the passing lane. Burns is going to take it straight to the basket. He'll be fouled and go to the line to shoot two. As Edelmeyer, I believe, will pick up that foul. That is the case. His first on personal. Tyson, Edelmeyer, that's his first. Fourth. Timeout on the court. And once again, Burns will be shooting free throws when we come back. 13 all, Southeastern lighting it up from outside. Number 11 has been great from three. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Crimson Storm fan base here. Not that far a trip, really, from Bethany. You know a little bit about that, Luke. What, oh, what's yeah, the drive? I'm shuttling back and forth. About 
about uh, just right at an hour from driveway to parking spot here at Fire Lake Arena. But from Bethany, it's a, it's a smidge close, about 45 minutes. A little bit nicer drive today. Sun was out. I mean, just yes, nice good. weather. And it's, uh, it's, it's a good venue here in Shawnee. Of course, we're inside. We have the climate control, and we can look out the doors every now and again and see what it's like. But it's a beautiful day outside, and I think it's a fantastic day for basketball. First of four games here, semifinal Saturday. You'll have Arkansas Tech taking on Northwestern Oklahoma State following this one as each of these teams looking to try to make it a championship Sunday and see if they can take that automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Burns makes the first. Savage Storm back on top. Yeah, Burns, tough start from the field. One of five. Missed a couple of the mid-range variety that he's usually automatic at. We'll see if that does anything. Now, Southeastern's extending some full-court pressure. Third in the conference this year, enforcing turnovers a little over 13 per game. Burns two for three from the free throw line today. Again, struggling from the outside, has a rebound, has one assist. Zetchic with the ball, top of the key is Coleman. And Coleman again, 28 and eight, yes, or 28 and eight, the points and rebounds yesterday. His stat line, just fantastic. I mean, it, not really a coming out party necessarily because he's been coming along as the as the season has progressed near the end, but still big time conference coming out party. And Sternberger gets a three. Savage Storm now extend the lead to three points. Yeah, Sternberger finally getting a three to go down in his third attempt. Driving in is Coleman and you know, I was talking about that. I know you've had a chance to see him a little bit more. As the season has progressed, he's really started to make his name as Dickinson tries one from outside. No good. And the Crimson Storm trail by one to have the ball. Yeah, Coleman, Coleman's been great. The last five games have been where he has really been contributing. Mason and Leslie with a block. Mason goes up strong again. He'll go to the line. Leslie will pick up the foul the second time, looking for a little bit of help in the lane. Well, Leslie is turning to his teammates saying there's no one here. Yeah. And, you know, he's absolutely right. Right now, the resistance at the rim for Southeastern has been paper thin, to say the least. A couple wide open layups to start the 7-0 run for SNU to start the game. And Leslie, all by himself in the middle of the paint with one-on-one -on -one with Keyshawn Mason. Leslie's a, you know, a strong defender, <laughs> solid player, but you know what I mean, that, that's not his forte, his post defense. That's not, that's not what he's out there for. And so Robert Briley coming back in along with Elijah Huey for the Savage Storm. But yeah, the, the rim defense not there for Southeastern to start the ball game. Storm trying to get some defense in. Savage Storm in and 0 for 2 from the line there for Keyshawn Mason. Just 61% the regular season, and Crimson Storm 67% as a team, which is dead last in the league. Been a tough year at the line for SNU. Riley starts his move outside the left elbow. Burns now with the ball, and he'll plant right there. Looks inside. Huey! And a great pass from Burns, who leads the GAC in assists. Second on the all-time list in the Great American Conference. He finds Huey for his first two of the day. Yeah, nice job by Huey, just kind of camping out, getting on the basket side of his defender. Zetchich, top of the key, looking over. Right wing three, no good. Edelmeyer doesn't get that to fall, and the Savage Storm will take it down the court. We expect a lot of points today, and because of the way that Southeastern dictates the offense, as Huey tries a three, that one's a little strong. Southern Nazarene will need to keep up if Southeastern will continue to control the pace. And in the early going, that has been the case. Yeah, and SNU, offense hasn't been the SNU's problem this year. It, it has been the defensive end that has been where SNU has struggled. You see Bartellamy with a nice floater in the middle of the paint. Coleman got caught in no man's land, just kind of like, here, take the ball. <laughs> Bartellamy from Quebec, Canada, making his first appearance in this contest. And Bartelme, real, real close with Oklahoma City Thunder player Lou Dort. Riley's fall away won't fall. And so Zetchich down the court. Savage Storm still the one point advantage here past the midpoint in the first half. Zetchich backing down Sternberger and gets the shot off the glass. Nice move on the right block. Well, and physically speaking, that's an advantage Zetchich right there. And he just took Sternberger and put him under the rim for the easy deuce. 
Such as a big, strong guy at 6'4". You know, Sternberger, no, not slight of build necessarily, but certainly that's an advantage physically for Zetchich. Well, comparatively. <laughs> Setchich does have the, the stronger frame. Huey in the lane, bounce pass to no one as the shot clock was winding down. More substitutions, Leslie and Cluett will come back in for the Savage Storm and the Crimson Storm bring Cam Slaymaker back to the contest. Cody Yeah, so far very even, very even. SNU's shot it well, 60% from the field thus far. Three turnovers has given Southeastern a few more opportunities along with three offensive rebounds, but haven't been able to take advantage of that and come out with a bigger lead. Yeah, Southern Nazarene, that's 60%. That dwarfs the 33% from the Savage Storm from the field today. Of course, with Southeastern, you're always gonna get a large volume there. I mean, the sample size is gonna be high. Nice reach in, Coleman just slaps the ball away and it's gonna stay on the Southern Nazarene end. Kicked out, round the top. And Edelmeyer will slow things down. Reset. In mismatch inside, Mason. Oh, they couldn't get it to him in time. Coleman spin move, jumper falls oh, off the back on. glass, rim up and in. Nice move, and that was all Coleman to get the steal and the two points as well. All the way around the horn, Sternberger in the corner. And Cluett. Good switching there by SNU. Oh, nice back. block Sternberger there by Mason. Blocks. He goes to the basket. You're right, Mason there to knock it away. Edelmeyer down the court. Leslie will pick him up there. SNU really connected right now defensively. They're communicating well, switching off nicely. You haven't seen any big issues where there's just been a blown assignment. And Sternberger goes off his knee or leg. He'll take it all the way down the court and lose control of it and picked up. Pass down the court, Edelmeyer, two on one look, Edelmeyer goes to the basket, can't get to the fall, block underneath, and then the foul called a little bit after that. Riley will pick up the foul, and it's gonna send the Crimson Storm to the free throw line to shoot two. When we come back. sequence there, Joey. Timeout. Nesson, you the beneficiary, and they've got a three point lead. 6.50 to go, first half. Free throws coming up for the Crimson Storm. You have the talent and dedication to succeed in school and in sports will provide the opportunity. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but strength, knowledge, and wisdom are what you build along the way. There's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, you write your own script to what comes next. So here's your cue right here, right where you are. Focus on the now, because our focus is on your success. Here are the defending GAC Conference Tournament champions, the Southeastern Savage Storm. There's Coach Mackenzie Schur and her Savage Storm softball team in town to play some softball today. Now, I don't think they're going to suit up and get out on the court right now, although they look like they're ready if, they, if Coach Green needs somebody else. And you know, he could uh, definitely use some extra players. He'll send people in and out. Coach Schur's team ready to play today. They were rained out yesterday. And so they're looking at maybe a one and three o'clock start today. So they thought, you know what, we'll come and watch a little basketball, support the men's basketball team while we're here in town. Yeah, I think those spikes might cause some damage to the wood floor there, Joey. <laughs> that might be a bit of an issue for the folks here at Fire Lake Arena. It was a seven point advantage early for the Crimson Storm. Got off to a seven nothing lead. This four point lead now the long, largest since then. Keyshawn Mason makes the first of two and follows it up with another make. 25-20, Crimson Storm on top. Every media timeout we've gone to has been followed with free throws. And two made this time for the Crimson Storm. Burns looking for Cluett. Again, some really good seamless switches here. Burns is going to find Leslie this time. 
misses from outside the arc, proves himself to be human. Three for four from that spot. No good underneath. Briley with the board. His putback will go for Southeastern. And you know, Luke, you give Southeastern four opportunities. This team is going to make one eventually. Edelmeyer to Coleman, top of the key. And now five offensive rebounds for the Savage Storm. That can't continue if you're SNU. Inside and the rim, unkind. And it's going to go from Briley over to Sternberger now. Second chance points are even, though. Three offensive boards, four second chance points apiece here in the early going. Burns fall away, no good. And three black jerseys there. Mason comes away with the board. Burns now with just one of seven. And a lot of them have been that short mid-range shot that he's so good at. You know, and he needs to stay focused and not get frazzled. He's he'll, and, but he will do better as he puts his momentum toward the glass. You know, the fall away not something that is as strong for him. But you give him an opportunity to go straight to the rack. That's where he'll be a little bit stronger. And great defense. Coleman steps in and knocks it out right in front of the scorer's table, trying to get away from Cluett. Good job on defense by Terrell Coleman, but last touched it, Southeastern will keep control. Sternberger inbound it, and one of the points about number 20 there, as you see the senior from Kingfisher, Oklahoma, the Southeastern team has many, many, many players that can shoot the ball well. I mean, it's, it's a spread the wealth issue, but number 20 may be as pure a shooter as there is on the court right now. Yeah, it's been a rough year for him, just 30% from the field, or from three-point range, I should say. And there's, that's how you do it. That's how you get back on the right track. An easy one right at the bucket for Brendan Burns. But Sternberger's had a rough year, you know, not only shooting the ball, but also physically. Just illness in the first semester, and then right when he's getting better and starting to get right, he injures it's his knee. knee injury, yeah. Long range three comes up just a bit short for Zesich. And so Southeastern now with an opportunity to try to retake the lead. Crimson Storm by one. And we are in the home stretch of the first half here. One dribble and picks it up as Leslie. He's going to kick it back out to Cluett and Cluett around the horn. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. Sternberger letting that shot clock wind down. Burns. Has to make something happen here. Straight to the basket. Riley kicked Briley for three. That one's too strong. And the shot clock winds down. Probably not the look that Coach Green wanted. Again, that's what that's what they got because SNU switching everything out on the perimeter. And, and the pace of the game, by the way, has now gone back to where Southern Nazarene would want it. Slowed things down. Defense helping out. Coleman falling away off the glass. That one too strong. Drew contact there, didn't get the call. And Leslie pulls up. Briley top of the key. Around the horn. And Burns, straight up jumper that time. And back to back shots made by Brennan Burns. Savage Storm on top by one. Game of runs out here today, Joey. That's six uh, straight for the Savage Storm to get the lead back. And Burns with the deflection causes the turnover. Leslie picked up by Visser way outside. That could be a mismatch if Visser doesn't close out. That six foot two frame. Leslie goes up top of the key. Leslie's hot. Leslie. Four point advantage for the Savage Storm and Coach Foster seen enough for just a moment. He'd take the timeout. We will take it as well. Southeastern, 29 points now after Kyle Leslie trains his fourth tray of the afternoon. Hey, what you doing this for? Just out here for recreational purposes? <laughs> Working, man. Mission today is to work hard until you can't go no more. It's always a team mission. Can't get nowhere without the team. It takes everybody. One, two, three. Hey, you better be open. You better be open. Man, listen, man, listen. It's only one attitude that you got to bring. Let's go. That you need to bring. Work, 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 work. I mean, we come out here every day to get better. It was easy. I ain't by the door, man. We work out on the street. You feel me? We the best in the nation. We outwork, yo. We outwork anybody. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
Every time I come through these lines, no matter what these lines at, work. Maximum effort. Luke mentioned a little earlier that it's a game of runs. Southeastern, when they finally got things going, opened their scoring with a 10-0 run and on a 9-0 run right now. After trailing 25-20, Savage Storm get a couple of big baskets from Burns, and that was followed by a three-pointer from Kyle Leslie. Princeton Storm need to put points on the board now. Pace of the game, though, in favor of Southern Nazarene. A little bit more of a defensive slow-down attack right now to keep Southeastern out of that frenetic pace. Yeah, that that is going SNU's way. The problem with the game of runs, which is fine if you have your runs yourself like they have, but the problem is, you know, you're, you can't stay in an offensive rhythm if you're just going back and forth, you know, 10 points here, the other team gets 10 points, eight points here, the other team gets seven yeah. points. You know, you're both teams out of rhythm with that as opposed to just when you're trading baskets, you know, you're keeping your offense in the flow of things. Not the case so far this afternoon. Well, after Visser's second basket of the day, Cluett answers with a three. Southeastern extends to its largest lead of the day, 32-27. You know, there's a, there's a bit of a mismatch, though, with Jonas Visser in the contest for Southern Nazarene as Zetchic hits the three and answers what Cluett does. That could be a mismatch on the inside. Southeastern has a little bit of height, but I don't know that the Savage Storm have the answer for what Visser can do. Well, and that's the, that's the trick with Southeastern is can you impose your will by keeping Visser on the court? You know, is he able to stick with all the switching, playing on the perimeter? Can he do that as Baker McCann ties it up at 32 with a beautiful coast-to-coast -coast play? Because SNU would love to keep Visser and Keyshawn Mason out on the floor as much as possible and kind of force Southeastern to defend them. But... And Kelly Green calling, letting the official know that Robert Briley dealing an ankle issue, it appears. And Coach Foster is wanting to know why the play was stopped at that point without just a whistle being blown. And Coach Green and Coach Foster discussing the issue now, and they, they need some help from the official. Coach Green going to come down, stay on, <laughs> actually left his end of the court, going to go down and get a little bit closer to where Coach Foster can hear him. The officials saying that's about enough of that. You guys stay in your respective corners. We'll call this game. Well, they don't know each other very well yet. It's B.J. Foster's first year. <laughs> They're just, you know, having a friendly chat and conversation, getting to know each other. Dickinson has nowhere to go with it. Shot clock winding down. Cluett fires and drinks the 23 footer right in front of the Southern Nazarene bench as the shot clock was winding down. Wow. And that's a big shot there from Cluett. Big momentum swing there. Zetchich sagged off just enough. Slaymaker. Partially blocked oh, by yeah. Dickinson. And Condiff gets the board. Dickinson finds the right baseline. Easy path to basket. No, it wasn't. Fisser there gets a hand in there and gets the block. My gosh, that was. Those are, those are that's denial that, by that Visser there. Holy smokes. Superhero caliber length of his arms. Wow. Well, he did that coming down from behind on the smaller Dickinson without create, without fouling, which was a huge thing as well, obviously. Clock winding down first half. Baker McCann goes up, shot nearly blocked. Ball recovered by Leslie, and the clock will run out in the first half. Maybe a little bit disjointed that last play down the court, and the clock runs out. Big time three-pointer for Cluett right in front of the Southern Nazarene bench. There's that block by Visser. Golly. Up from behind. He came from nowhere. All 6'10 of him gets the block as we will head to the intermission. A very fast pace of the game. Coach Green and Coach Foster are going to talk a little bit now as they head to the break and discuss things. Cooler heads now as we go to the intermission. We will take the break as well. 
That's a friendly talk right now. Absolutely. Always always good to reconcile. <laughs> Reconciliation is, is a good thing. Oh, they keep wondering. We'll see <laughs> if that the longer this remains, goes on. remains as reconciliation. But, yeah, great first half. Really even back and forth. You know, Joey, we're, it's a battle. It's a battle. we got to see which storm reigns supreme. Is it going to be Crimson or Savage here this afternoon? But got to love what you saw on both ends of the court, both ways, really. Both had high moments on both ends. We'll have some highlights. We'll come back. We'll talk about some statistics, the, the game of runs between these two here in just a moment. Really, I think it is what we've expected between these two. Maybe slightly lower score. I think I might have had it in the 40s, both teams cut the half, but I think it's the game that, that we expected to see. And with this place dictated by Southern Nazarene, maybe to keep it, you keep this game in the 70s between the two, I think that favors Southern Nazarene. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. SNU doing a nice job. Southeastern shooting just 38% from the field. They do have eight more field goal attempts because of the offensive rebounding in the first half and some turnovers for SNU. But overall, a great start to the game for SNU. You really like what you've seen from the Crimson Storm. They can just have a shot near the end of the ball game. That's all you can ask for. All right. Hey, let's keep it right here just long enough to give you some high points. Kyle Leslie, 12 points. He leads all scorers right now. Benno Zesich with 10 points for the Crimson Storm. And Southeastern with nine assists. Southern Nazarene, five assists back and forth throughout the two. And really, not a lot of fouls to speak of between the two either. No one in foul trouble. Uh, that also, I think, yeah, favors just seven, seven total whistles in that first half. So that that's a big deal for the second half, especially for SNU. You know, not a super deep team, but that's absolutely paramount for the Crimson Storm to stay out of foul trouble. You leave all your options on the table going into the second half. Crimson Storm hitting 50% from the field, six turnovers there, as you mentioned there. And Storm leading, Crimson Storm leading the way, have come back and gotten a lot of rebounds in the latter part of the first half. We'll take a break. We will come back more from Fire Lake Arena here in Shawnee, semifinal Saturday in the GAC. How to spot a bull weevil. Bull weevils are a fascinating species. They're known to travel in packs, are highly intelligent, and can thrive in any environment. Each and every bull weevil is unique, and they have unique opportunities. But they all share one common trait. Every bull weevil has a bright future awaiting wherever they go. And that's how you spot a bull weevil. Learn more at uamont.edu. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. East Central University encourages students to become who they are meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home. pushes you to diligence and excellence in all that you do. We're establishing this foundation where the students can, can then go and do the things that they want to do. Everything we do, everything we touch, everything that we try to teach our students revolves around Christ. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. You find a vision for your life, and I think that's where students really lean into their inspired purpose. Hey, future Eddies. Are you interested in a career in business? 
Tennessee State University offers bachelor's and master's degrees in business administration and certificates in analytics, marketing and communications, and nonprofit management. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Who do we look to to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. More than book smart, more than business smart, they are wise in their whole being. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what is character, culture, and Christ? Last but certainly not least, in fact, I would put it uh, first, and that is serving Christ. I like the fact that it's last because it does undergird everything that we do. Um, our responsibility, I believe more than anything else, is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Swasser has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swasu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, and great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swasu. Go, go! If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them. Or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the Mule Riders are. When you're a Mule Rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail. You're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Everyone tells you to think about the future, but there's power in the process. We value this moment because at ATU, every moment brings you one step closer to what comes next. You've got this right here, right where you are. Focus on the now because our focus is on your success. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. 
Hey, Future Readies. Are you interested in a career in technology? Kennesaw State University offers degrees in aviation, computer science, and engineering. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash ready to apply today or schedule a campus visit. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, until they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Why be one champ when I want to be two? Be like you, Sra. Let nothing destroy your dreams. Screw fate. Or maybe you beat doubt one step at a time, like Johnny. What about Zoe? Never satisfied. Not with trophies or stunts. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? Who do we look to, to shape our world? It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who contribute with compassion, courage, confidence. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. Tomorrow's difference makers and world changers will understand they are part of something bigger, an unstoppable force for good. More than book smart, more than business smart, they are wise in their whole being. These are the people who will shape our future, and you'll find them at OBU today. I am a future shaper. I'm a future shaper. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Southeastern Savage Storm on top by three. A run of 10, a run of nine. Sounds like we're playing phase 10 right now. That's how Southeastern scored to get things going and to take that lead. Jonas Visser on the inside. Really, Southern Nazarene had some great looks early on, exploited Southeastern's lack of defense in the early portion of this game. But the Savage Storm came back, put points on the board in a hurry. Betchic, Zetchic, excuse me, with three. But Kyle Leslie answered an all around the horn on the other end. Coleman coming off a big day yesterday, has some good moves early, and they're gonna need that in the second half. Zetchic down low, backing down on Sternberger, puts up two and burns the other direction. That's where he's strong, going straight to the rack. It was a steady dose of Kyle Leslie from the outside. He's stoked. And the Savage Storm coming away with a three-point advantage to the intermission. And look, you know, you look at that fantastic block from behind. That was that was great. Glad to see that in the highlight package. You look there, of course. Coach Foster in his first season, he and Coach Green maybe made up a little bit going to the intermission. What they were talking about was uh, Coach Green had told the official that Robert Briley couldn't feel his foot. And so the official determined that was good enough at that point to call an injury timeout. We had both mentioned, usually you let the play play out. And that was, I think, what Coach Foster was saying. That's how it's normally handed. Yeah, and it's a tough situation for the official. Um, you know, Robert Buckles there. Yeah, you know, there's clearly not a visible injury going on, so you don't want to, your instinct is to not stop it. There's no blood, there's no, you know, guy laying on the ground or anything, but at the same time, I mean, it could be a dangerous situation where if Riley truly can't feel his foot, then you don't want him to misstep and, you know, actually really injure himself. So that's something to uh, keep an eye on. Briley not on the Southeastern bench to start the second half. So certainly something we need to pay attention to 
as the second half rolls along. Clearly there was an issue in the Crimson Storm, Savage Storm back out on the court. Points can come quickly when these two teams play. And Visser, to address that point, puts the first two on the board for Southern Nazarene here in the second half, a one-point contest. Well, and this is something that is going to be something to watch in the second half. SNU now 22 to eight on points in the paint. Southeastern seven made three pointers and as good as Southeastern. Now, I honestly, I was, I was waiting for that call. I didn't know if he was actually gonna do it. Sternberger was in the lane at least three, three seconds or more. He got inside, had nowhere to go, kicked it out and fell over and literally sat in the lane. I mean, it's, it, the storm, partisan storm, savage storm crowd behind us here didn't like the call, but I think it's the right one. Yeah, I mean, it's three seconds in the lane, whether you're standing, jumping, standing, jumping, or having a picnic. Visser. Visser goes up and over three white jerseys, and his four points to start the second half gives Southern Nazarene the lead again. 36-35, Burns delayed dribble, and he's going strong to the basket. Not sure what everybody was wanting to travel on that play. Visser's foot clearly kept his toe down. And there you see Visser picking up the first foul called on the court. But again, 24 points now in the paint for SNU. And again, as good as Southeastern shoots the three ball, one points in the paint or three pointers are which of those two is a more sustainable model? It's shots at the rim, Joey, and for SNU to have 24 points in the paint out of their 36, that's a lot more sustainable than three pointers. Slaymaker has the ball taken away as Burns went to the court, and the foul is going to be called the other direction, and I believe this is going to go on Visser. It does, and the reason that Burns had the contact with Cl uh, Slaymaker is because so Visser took him to the court. May have taken exception to being left behind in the lane as Burns went to the basket on that previous trip. Yeah, tough deal there. And you know, it looked like there might have been some contact out top by Burns on Slaymaker before that. Dickinson off the mark, tipped around, and Visser will get the long rebound. He'll get he'll get rebounds a plenty. Normally doesn't have to stand out 19 feet from the basket and wait for one to bounce to him. Skip pass to the corner where Coleman is and Baker McCann dribbles his off his foot, able to get it back to Zechic. And Zechic trying to find room on the baseline. Sternberger slides over and Zechic picks up the personal foul. Back to back trips for Southern Nazarene, in which a turnover is committed by way of the offensive foul. Yeah, and Joey, I'm I'm team no charge and Cody Cluett stepping in and taking over to mop up the court. I think uh, you were looking for some help with the court issues yesterday. So yeah, good Kluett, job by, good stepping job by in Leslie for you. there, stepping in. And, or excuse but, me, uh, Leslie. Yeah, I can see Zezic's issue with that call. Sternberger kind of just slid over underneath. You know, certainly wasn't set by any stretch. And we saw a couple calls in the day yesterday where more set position players than that were called for blocks. Zetchich looking to go baseline again, this time up and over, and he stops and pops. The little jumper from six feet works just as well as the trip right to the basket. And so Burns is gonna push off, and that's an easy call the other direction. Extend the arm like that, yep. and that's gonna pick up the call. Yep. The Heisman's a football move, Joey. It's not a basketball move. And Brendan, Bur and Brendan Burns just gave Ben Baker McCann the Heisman pose. I, I did that pose with, with my babies when they were young enough for me to hold in one arm. That's How'd your wife feel about that? Big, great pictures. She knew it was coming. <laughs> one of those, you married me, honey. That's exactly right. It's, it's a sports family. Visser backing down on Dickinson down low. Has the size, has the length, has the shot. That's there all day for SNU. If they're gonna leave Dickinson on Visser, SNU just needs to give it to him every single time down the court. Sternberger makes his move, kicks back out to Burns. 14 feet from the basket, still in the lane, and the bounce pass. There were three black jerseys 
in between Burns and Dickinson trying to cut baseline. Steal for the Crimson Storm. And Baker McCann kicks back out. Shot clock inside and a three second violation the other direction. And right call that way too as Visser had camped out in the lane. The officials getting some encouragement from the crowd on that call as well. Sternberger checks out as Con checks back in. Replacing Jet Sternberger. Good to see Robert Briley back into the game. He did not start the second half on the bench, so good to see him out there. And Briley will pick up the quick foul. Had the easy path to the basket, and that was that shot did not look like Briley. He just lost control and honestly looked like as he takes an elbow to the face there and contact between he and Visser. Look, the shot didn't look right. Yeah, it, was, it looked yeah, it was like he was strange. finding an angle on the wrong side of the backboard. And Visser has had a black eye under his left eye for the past two weeks now, just getting over that. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. <laughs> Doesn't want to get another one that quickly. Slaymaker outside the arc, now he drives left side, spin, jumper, count it. And that's a great move by Slaymaker. Burns is a great defender, but he's also only 5'11". Slaymaker 6'4". So he's got some height advantage there. Leslie doesn't get that one to fall on the other end. Kluitz turnaround jumper no good. And Baker McCann will come away. Contact from Briley down low. And Robert Briley picks up another foul just like that. First media timeout as the Crimson Storm on a run now. 6-0 run for Southern Nazarene. They have a five-point advantage. We see you. Your incredible potential and willpower set you apart. You're first to take that leap of faith. First to get to work. First to solve the problem. No burden should be carried alone. We'll be there. Every step, day, challenge. First is your destiny. We get it because first is who we are. At East Central University, we educate and empower students to transform the world. We provide an exceptional hands-on learning experience with professors who really go that extra mile. East Central University encourages students to become who they're meant to be while making lasting memories. East Central University, welcome home. Crimson Storm, that 6-0 run, the last minute 51. They come out in the second half, solid defense. Southeastern shots not falling as they need to. Checking in the contest now for Southeastern, Enzo Silvera from Sao Paulo, Brazil, the 6'10 center. He checks in for Briley. Briley with some foul trouble. Well, this is a good move for Southeastern. Silvera, he's got the size and strength to deal with Visser inside. Now, it, you know, might tweak things offensively for Southeastern just a little bit, but I think the benefits defensively for Southeastern are much more important at this point with SNU holding this five-point lead. Samantha Roop had an opportunity to hear what was going on on the southeastern side. Storm trailing right now, Samantha. What's going on over there? Well, coming back after halftime, Coach, Coach Green did say we need to be better at transitioning from offense to defense, but this time he's talking more about offense. He says that they need to stay more patient on the outer circle, but inside under the basket, they need to be more intense in getting those rebounds. So we'll see how their offense improves. Officials say that one was last touched by Baker McCann. Thank you, Samantha. And it's the right call there. Ben got up and knocked it down between the arms of Silvera. Good look there from Coleman, but going to take a breather right now for Edelmeyer. cluett has been really quiet today. Yeah, he has. To, to that point, and Leslie. 
comes up short on the fallaway jumper. His momentum was taking him wide to the left. And of course, that shot just comes up short. That you have to be go up really, have some upper body strength to try to push that in when your momentum is taking you so far from the basket. Quick to the basket, there's how you make it happen. Slaymaker Slay with an easy two as he goes up strong. Crimson Storm now up by seven. Burns fouled, he'll go to the line to shoot two. That's three on Visser. So Visser gonna have to come out of the ball game and Southeastern and breathing a bit of a sigh of relief there. And you know, his fouls, I, I believe all three of them have come on Burns. I, I believe you're right there, Joey. Interesting matchup, the tallest player on the court right now, uh, matching up against the shortest player currently on the court. Burns just four of 12 today, has 10 points, but missed another free throw, 80% at the line He's this season. And replacing Jonas Visser. You know, Burns is the guy just like with Adam Dworsky a couple years ago in Southeastern really needs something as great of a distributor as he is, surrounded by great shooters. He's the one who's gonna put the team on his back, get to the rim, try to force the action, exactly how Dworsky used to do it. It's not gonna be Kluid, it's not gonna be Leslie or Sternberger, it's gonna be Burns being the guy. And that's what we're seeing right now, forcing the action. Southeastern again, extending some full court pressure. We saw this a little bit in the first half, not too much. SNU handled it well in those moments. You know, you mentioned that, and, and the comparison between Dworsky and, and Burns, I mean, it's obvious if you watch the two players there. And, and with respect to Burns, what Dworsky did, by the way, I don't know that I have seen anyone in the GAC, and that includes a lot of very, very quick Southern Nazarene guards too, Luke. I don't know if anybody had that, that extra gear that Dworsky did to get from one end of the court to the other. He was phenomenal. Just like that, Burns back the other way. Great move by Ben Baker McCann inside, getting free of Leslie, just couldn't get the shot to go. Slaymaker going strong again. That time, can't get the shot. Hits the underside of the rim, burns the other direction. Southeastern trying to make a run. Briley back in the game, and that angle to the basket looked more like a Robert Briley shot. Coach Foster has seen enough. He'll take a timeout right now. And Southeastern not allowed to get on the run, at least without an opportunity to slow down and think about it just a little bit. Crimson Storm still with a two-point advantage here in Shawnee. Education pushes you to diligence and excellence in all that you do. We're establishing this foundation where the students can, can then go and do the things that they want to do. Everything we do, everything we touch, everything that we try to teach our students revolves around Christ. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. You found a vision for your life, and I think that's where students really lean into their inspired purpose. Coach Foster, and a lot of wisdom, I believe, in that timeout, Luke, because the, the last two times Southeastern went on a run, there was opportunity in the court. He just slows down right now. Not going to let them get on the quick run. If they do come back and put points on the board, it's not going to be because they just had the opportunity, the momentum, and, and just were feeling it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you look at what SNU has done. Southeast are still just shooting 36%. Haven't made a three here in the second half. So SNU still doing a lot of good things defensively. Outscoring Southeastern 28-14 in the paint. Offensive glass has been good for Southeastern. Six offensive rebounds. Points off turnovers a big thing for Southeastern as well. Fetchich backs down on Condiff. Shot doesn't fall, but Mason comes through with the rebound and the put back. Visser's out right now, Mason is in, and it's his job to guard Briley down low. Burns behind the back, looks for Briley, 
one more pass, and Leslie has that knocked away and can't control it, and he touches it last out of bounds off Southeastern. Edelmeyer coming from the backside there, just blocked that shot from behind, and then it ricocheted out of bounds off Leslie. And we talked yesterday about how Coach Foster said that this back to action with the Savage Storm. We'll get to that point here in a second. Leslie, by the way, four for nine from the field. He's missed all three shots he's attempted inside the arc. Sternberger, little short, rebound Sechich. And the Crimson Storm with a four-point advantage, looking to add to that here. Anyway, you probably couldn't see it on your screen, but you know, after that block by Edelmeyer, Giannis Visser right behind his head coach up at the scorer's table, applauding, encouragement, exhorting his teammate for the play. And Coach Foster saying, Visser's been the guy who's been the most consistent with that extra work throughout the season, getting in the gym, doing things he needed to. And that's, a, that's a good foul by Zecic. He has one to give, or has a few to give. That'll be just his second personal foul, but not giving up the in-transition look for Burns heading down the court, because there were a number of black jerseys still on the other end. So a decent foul for Southern Nazarene, and it will send us to another media timeout. Crimson Storm had the advantage right now, dictating the pace, playing strong defense. Southern Nazarene on top here in the second half. Who do we look to? to shape our world. It'll be people who know how to think with their heads and their hearts. People who understand that faith is not the enemy of education, but its partner. More than book smart, more than business smart. They are wise in their whole being. We are future shapers. Learn to live well and lead well in God's world. Be a future shaper at OBU. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what is character, culture, and Christ? Last but certainly not least, in fact, I would put it uh, first, and that is serving Christ. I like the fact that it's last because it does undergird everything that we do. Um, our responsibility, I believe more than anything else, is to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the Nazarene shot 47% from the field yesterday, shooting 48.8% from the field today. Looking good for the number four seed. Burns has nowhere to go with it. And Sessich steps in the passing lane. And it's blocked by Cluett. by Cluett, who has some words for him afterwards. That should slow down just enough. And Condiff in transition, trying to make it a big turnaround back the other direction. Zetsich slows down, looking for somebody skip pass. This is going to be on the left wing three. Count that for Edelmeyer. Yeah, that's a big shot for Edelmeyer. Scoreless three of his last four games. Had one big game early in the season, 16 points at East Central. That's the only 10-plus game of the season. Ahead, off the glass, too strong. Cluett looks ahead now. Crimson Storm back on defense. Really, is Zetchic and Mason just stayed home. That's unfortunate for Baker McCann. Leslie for three. That one rims out. Leslie hasn't found his rhythm on the home end of the court. Sternberger, Sternberger will check back in for Southeastern and the Crimson Storm after that big three from Edelmeyer up by seven now. Yeah, it's been it's been a quiet run for SNU, but Southeastern just two of their last 13 from the field. They're shooting 33%, 21% in the second half. Savage Storm will have runs like this where they do score and runs where they do not. And Burns could not find an open player on the inbound, a five second call. That is a huge turnover for Southeastern. Yeah, and you know, Joey, there, there's one team out here that's looking pretty frazzled and it's not the lower seed right now. Southern Nazarene, mentioned in the outset, 
has gotten the better of Southeastern in postseason play since they've both been members of the Great American Conference. Mason backs down on Leslie and just and puts that up yeah, and it's in. Just, it's just too easy. Mason's just backing him down and putting his armpits in the rim. And Leslie has just one personal foul. Could afford to put a body up there. Burns to the basket. He'll draw the contact. He'll go to the line to shoot too. And Mason unhappy about it. His teammates will bring him back and say, all right, we have a lead. It's two on Mason now, three on Vissers over there on the bench. But halfway through the second half, SNU leading by nine. And Joey, I don't think it can be overstated how much that overtime loss in Bethany stung for the Crimson Storm. They should have beaten Southeastern that day. They made some mistakes in the closing moments of regulation and just couldn't hit shots in the overtime period. But they, they should have won that game. And that gave them a lot of confidence for today, no doubt, knowing that, hey, this is not an unbeatable team. And a little bit of a mix here as sophomore Jaden Bridgman checking in. Sophomore out of Sperry, Oklahoma. He's played in 20 games this year, but just nine minutes per game. Little impetus there as Pruitt with the steal, goes strong to the basket, avoids Zetchic, and Southeastern stops the scoring drought. Full court pressure, and the Crimson Storm will break it. Briley way up high. And over to Zetchic now. They reset. Half the time's run off the shot clock. Shortening the game favors the Crimson Storm as well. Shot clock down to four. Slaymiker drives in, loses control of it. Sternberger's gonna keep it, kicks outside. Burns thinks about the long two, thinks better of it. Cluett doesn't think better of the long three. Tipped back out, and a two on two look, now two on one. Slaymaker leaves, and Sternberger steps into the passing lane. Oh, Slaymaker should have just taken that one straight to the basket. There by Slaymaker. Burns leaves behind. Cluett won't take that long three. Instead, he'll go all the way in, leave for Briley off the glass, and the storm with two more quick points. Savage storm, that is. Pressure getting to the Crimson Storm a little bit here, and Southeastern with a lot of momentum. Contact, trying to get the ball inside. Two on two on the Southern Nazarene end. Now all the players kick back in for the half court look. If I'm asking you, I try to go back inside. That Whoa, works too. Three for Zetchich though, and that works too. I was gonna say, he didn't take your advice. <laughs> There have been so many moments like that for Ben Ozecic this year where you know, he just kind of sizes somebody up and just rises up above him and buries a three. Burns drives in, he'll draw the contact once again and he'll go to the free throw line once again. Well, as as Mason Another is foul there. on Mason as he is three. starting to pick them up. Well, if, if Mason checks out now, it looks like that Visser may come in to take his place. Southern Nazarene not losing that much on the inside with Jonas Visser coming in. Burns first free throw is good as Visser does check in. And Baker McCann also checking into the contest for Slaymaker. Along with Tyrell Coleman. Yeah, that uh, bounce pass for Edelmeyer on the fast break did not earn him any points with the coaching staff over there. <laughs> Free throws made for Burns. He'll take a seat now as Condiff checks back in. Now, this is the veteran group right here for SNU. You got all seniors on the court right now. Sure, they haven't played together before this year, but they're all seniors. They're all smart guys. Zetchich had a three last trip down the court. And Sternberger moving his feet, doesn't slide over in time, and he will pick up the foul. Yeah, so wasn't going to get that call twice. An inbound, just five seconds off the shot clock. Just the fourth team foul. Honestly, Joey, I thought he was in better position on that one than he was on the first one. 
Baker McCann, top of the key, three-pointer count it. Southern Nazarene back on top by seven. Man, it's a big shot from Ben, and the whistle's gonna stop play and send us to our media timeout. What a three there by Ben Baker McCann. Crimson Storm fan base excited, rightfully so. From downtown Shawnee, Southern Nazarene. Swasser has been saying that the focus is you for 20 years. Now that I'm here, I know my voice matters. It's a true home away from home where the professors really do put the focus on me and my dreams. At Swasu, it feels like they are cheering me on with so many ways to get involved, like social clubs, sports, quality academics, and great people who care about your success. For real, the focus is on you. Open the door to your future at Swasu. Go, go! Swasu, the focus is you. Hey, future readies. Are you interested in careers that help your community? Henderson State University offers degrees in nursing, teaching, psychology, social work, and health and human performance. Visit hsu.edu slash degrees to see the full list of degree opportunities. We are here to help you be ready for what's next. Contact us at admissions at hsu.edu or visit hsu.edu slash readies to apply today or schedule a campus visit. Savage Storm generally not concerned when another team gets ahead of them Sounds really at any ball. point in the game because they know that they can make up those points. Right now, though, getting into the home stretch of this one, the Crimson Storm have a seven-point advantage coming off good offense and strong defense. Briley, triple team now. Among all the defenders has Edelmeyer. that one blocked all the way to Leslie. He hasn't been successful in the second half. Sternberger oh, from the corner Coleman got has a piece that of one that blocked one. as well. Great defense by Southern Nazarene on that possession. Visser well outside the arc. Zetsich again for three. Double digit advantage now for Southern Nazarene, the four seed making a statement late in this game. Southeastern finding Briley coming through the lane. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Nice pass and Briley needing to stop the bleeding offensively. That on Jackson Edelman, that's his second. Team safe. Robert Briley at the run, at the line shooting two. Southern Nazarene made its last three baskets. A couple of them from long range. Zetchich has stepped up now with 18 points in this one. Seven of 14 from the field. Four of seven of those from outside the arc to go with five assists as well. Second free throw won't go for Briley. Crimson Storm with the board. Under seven minutes remaining, a nine point advantage. Baker McCann will slow this one down. And again, shortening the game benefits the Crimson Storm now, especially with a nine point lead. Zesich from long range falls away. This one will not go. It comes up well short to save to Southeastern. Uh, Coleman saving that kind of kick started the fast break a little bit for Southeastern. Savage Storm with numbers. Burns goes all the way around everyone. Doesn't draw the contact this time. And Coleman down the court stops oh. off the glass, lets the defender go by. Tyrell Coleman. He kind of fumbled it and it let Cluid fly by, or Leslie, excuse me, the little bit of a bobble there by Coleman was the key to getting free on that shot. Largest lead of the game, defense again. Sessich all the way down and he'll get contact. He'll go to the free throw line. Cluid coming in just a fraction late. And That's the GAC leader in thievery right there, Ben Ozecic, 55 steals in the regular season. Now, gonna plant the seed here, Joey, because we know Southeastern's gonna make a run and come back here. They're gonna make a run at some point. Zecic just 48% at the free throw line this season. 
He's also one of SNU's most valuable players. Could we see a Hakazich <laughs> later in the ball game if these things get tight? Something to think about. Something just a, exactly just going right. to plant that little seed here. Six minutes to play still, but something to think about as the game goes along. Look at that, how tight that was. Three players converged on that Burns drive. Leslie goes up, still unsuccessful in the second half, still unsuccessful inside the arc. But you saw that, Southeastern. On, that on that drive by Burns. Edelmeyer scooted over, Visser stepped up, primary defender right there with him as well. I think it was Baker McCann. Shot clock winding down. Burns goes to the basket, off the glass, and in. That's a strong take. That's a really nice screen out top by Leslie. Edelmeyer kind of shaking off the cobwebs a little bit. That was a hard screen by Leslie. It stopped a drought of about three and a half minutes of scoring for Southeastern. And a turnover now as the ball hit the sideline. Looked like the long pass. Kicked that. It, did that not go off Sternberger? Well, it did go foot? off Sternberger, but it was dribbled as it went to the sideline. Last touched. Well, the on the pass, it looked like Sternberger got that with his foot. Oh, yes. You're not going to see that there, there Baker but McCann. yeah, Baker McCann didn't quite get it across. That's another turnover for us in years. Their 13th of the game. Savage Storm turned that into 14 points so far. Burns back to the basket again. I'll tell you what, he's a magician with hiding that ball until the very last second to find a way to get it off the glass. Two quick baskets as the 30-second timeout allows us to keep it right here for Southeastern and get it back to within a single-digit deficit, five minutes remaining in this game. Well, here's a couple things. Number one, Southeastern hasn't made a three-pointer in the second half. They're 0 for 7. Number two, this is playing out according to the numbers as far as what SNU's been able to do. They're shooting 52% from the field. We heard from Kelly Green before the tournament. They're not a good defensive team, Southeastern. He, you know, he straight up admits that. He knows that they are not a good defensive team. No one is going to look at them and say, that's a good defensive team. SNU's been able to do whatever they wanted offensively. They've gotten some shots to fall that, you know, maybe you're like, ah, that, that's a tough shot, tip your cap. But, you know, they also have 34 points in the paint. That's a winning formula. There's still five minutes to go. The one thing about Southeastern on defense is that you're not going to get Nolan Richardson's 40 minutes of hell. What you might, however, get is three minutes near the end of the game. Oh, However, it was as fortuitous as it could come for Southern Nazarene. A strong move to the basket, going up and over Leslie, getting the hands out there, but it was just too much strength from Coleman, and the shot falls. He'll go to the line with the and one, back to a double-digit lead for Southern Nazarene. It's a nice job by Leslie, anticipating the lob from Zecic to Visser. Obviously, if you got a guy 16, you're probably going to throw it up, not bounce it, but. Coleman now with Coleman 12 points. On the spot again. Four players in double figures for SNU. The balance has been really nice today. Oh, that's a nice pass. Great look by Kluett. And cutting to the basket with Sternberger. A nine-point advantage for Southern Nazarene now. With the ball, four and a half remaining. Baker McCann trying to let Sternberger come through. We'll slow it down. Clock the friend of the Crimson Storm right now. Top of the key, Zesich has room. Decides to dribble in. Kicks outside. Corner. Left corner three. Won't fall. Briley with the board. Southeastern a 1-3-1 on that possession. Mixing things up a little bit. Leslie goes strong to the basket, has it ripped away what from him, play. kicks oh, outside. Sternberger saved. for three, count it. Oh, it's man. a six-point deficit now. That's unfortunate. Great defensive play by Coleman with the block from behind. And Edelmeyer saved it. It kicked off Leslie's foot, but he was able to grab it just before it went out of bounds for the open three. Look inside, Baker McCann. In a bunch of white jerseys inside Zesich now. He's had the hot hand of late. He drives in, keeps that hot hand, back to an eight-point lead. 
Burns quickly down the court. I swear, when Burns gets in, going into the front court like that, it's like there's a number two out there again. <laughs> Strong to the basket. Also, that is number four. Number nine on the team, and we've got a media out A media timeout as we will take this final one. A home stretch here, semifinal number one on the men's bracket. An eight point lead for the Crimson Storm. If you're not at home, where else would you be? Not the kind of home you're familiar with, but the kind that helps you become them or them. The kind where you become a part of a community that builds you up. A community that doesn't just give you the answers, but helps you discover them for yourself. Home is where the mule riders are. When you're a mule rider, you're not walking down a predetermined trail. You're blazing your own. The world is full of unsettled questions with so much to explore. Enter it with full reins of knowing who you are, where you come from, and what ignites your flame. Here at home, you have no limits. Reach for the stars and don't stop there. As a mule rider, you decide what's possible. Stop imagining what you could do and do it here. Think bigger. Think faster. Let's ride. Don't worry, you're not far from home. Because home is where the mule riders are. Savage Storm will have the ball on the southeastern end. Another free throws out of the timeout, Joe, and two more for Burns. <laughs> Every time. And he has been to the free throw line a number of times today already. He's seven for nine from the stripe. He's got nine of the team's 11 free throw attempts, which to an extent highlights the issues that Southeastern has had today. No, no one besides Burns is going to the rim. No one besides Burns is making plays inside. SNU just eight free throw attempts, but when you're shooting 53% from the field, you don't need the free throws. Second one does go. Seven point contest now. Crimson Storm not in a hurry to get anything going on the offensive end. There's a pressure trying to instigate some action. Baker McCann. Extending the arm a little bit, trying to create just a bit of separation, and he'll get things going now. Shot clock at 10. Edelmeyer inside, sets it alone, top of the key. That one too strong, and it will. Good look, good ball good movement. Good inside out from Edelmeyer. Wide open look there for Zetchich, just couldn't get it to fall. Good. Big break there for Southeastern because he uh, had a lot of space. It was. Burns trying to create some space of his own. He'll make his look. Sternberger, long three, too short. I, I, if, if you're SNU, you're fine with that. Sternberger's a great shooter, but that was a long way out early in the shot clock. You're, o you're okay with that one. Edelmeyer, top of the key. Looking left side. If I'm, if I'm SNU, I go Zetchich here. Baker McCann drains the three too. up and over Cluett. They're not listening Baker to your McCann. advice, Luke. No, that was, that was kind of a no, 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 yes. Exactly. Burns driving in. Briley, his team down nine. Leslie hasn't found the range yet here in the second half. That one tipped. Sternberger's going to try to chase Oh, what a play by oh, Edelmeyer. Oh, my goodness. And Sesich. With Holy the basket. smokes! Leslie, no good, too long. Baker McCann with the board, and the Crimson Storm are up by 12. What an incredible play on the other end to keep that in. That's a highlight oh play right there. Gosh, look at this, folks. He lays out to just keep the ball in play to get it to Zetchich. And a timeout taken, 30-second variety. Crimson That's Storm. how you win championships, Joey. Plays like that. Guys who average three points a game, laying out, diving into the scores table. I mean, look at this. Look at this hustle. 
He knows he can't corral it. He just swipes it to keep it in play. He knows Zetchich is up ahead. Oh, man. Absolutely. Full extension. Needlemeyer with one of the plays of the tournament to this point in time. And what could be insurance points for the Crimson Storm with a lead of 12 and less than two minutes remaining. So SNU burning that time out in the backcourt. They've only got one left. Set throw in on the sideline to our left. Southeastern has two timeouts. The Crimson Storm shooting 59% in the second half. There's the pressure. Nominal as much as anything. And past the timeline. You know, Joey, I'm always, it's always interesting to me how the and Southeastern committing some fouls. Okay, that was their seventh team foul. I'll say, couldn't remember exactly where they were on the team foul. I might have to foul just to get to the free throw segment. But it's always interesting to me how teams can get bailed out by a timeout in the backcourt because SNU called timeout with four seconds to get it across. But because they called timeout, that time, that 10 second count resets. I've always been a little perplexed how you can do that. I guess the penalty is you have to burn a timeout. <laughs> Free throw made for Baker McCann. And here, here's the, you know, we talked about this earlier specifically for Zetchich, but SNU, not a great free throw shooting team as a whole. They have some good free throw shooters individually, Cam Slaymaker being first and foremost among those, but Ben Baker McCann, 69% during the regular season. We'll see if that comes to play a factor. But a 14 point lead. Cluett for three, that one rims out. The iron has been unkind to Southeastern in the second half. The three pointers that were falling in the first, a distant that's memory right now. Number 20, Jeff Sternberger, that's his second. Number eight on the team. Joey, Joey, I am, I am absolutely floored shooting one and one. by this performance. 33% shooting in the second half, 36% for the game. Just for the record, Southeastern's worst shooting percentage came in their win at home against Arkansas Tech. They shot 36% from the field. They've been under 40% just three times this season. And the and conference tournament, not the place to have a performance like that. No, and, and Joey, the, the pressure in these situations is always on the top seed. They have the pressure on them because, I mean, SNU knows, hey, you know, we, we didn't play well enough in the regular season to have a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Southeastern, it's like, well, we did at times, but, you know, it stinks that we're not going to have a chance unless we win this. We have to win this. And they around, they clue it underneath. Felt like they no just played back. tight. Burns, and he'll kick it out and out of bounds. So a few more ticks now off the clock with that uh, set on that end. And we're down to 69 seconds. It's still a 15-point lead. Sternberger drains a three. It's been a long time coming since the last Sternberger three-pointer. And it takes a little bit off the Southern Nazarene lead, but not a lot. Well, and another thing, lowest scoring total of the season for Southeastern. They've been under 70 just twice. 68 in their loss to Southwest Minnesota State way back in November 10th, back when it was still football season. 68 points, they're at 64 right now. 12-point lead for the Crimson Storm, who are trying to punch their ticket into Championship Sunday. Southern Nazarene. They've, they've seen action on the final day before, looking to get back into that Sunday game. Wild card if SNU holds on here. They'll face one of Tech and Northwestern. There's still 65 Richard seconds here, plenty of time with how Southeastern shoots the three ball. That, so... That's who you wanted in the hands of if you're SNU. You want it in Slaymaker's hands. Baker, Baker McCann, McCann going to keep it. Baker McCann, a 
good secondary option. He's got the second most free throw attempts on the team besides Slaymaker. Number nine on the team, shooting one and one is number 15. So Baker McCann, you know, 68% of the line, but he's got 130 attempts. So, you know, he's got the frequency. Some of these other guys on the court, it's not as many. But, you know, SNU, they swept Tech in the regular season. And the game in Russellville, they took them behind the woodshed and just smothered them, much like they did today against Southeastern. Storm looking to let some time wait until they pick up the ball and easy clear path to the basket right there. Cody Cluett with the quick two points, but Crimson Storm willing to give that up. Cluett with the steal, not as willing to give that one up and Sternberger for three. Okay. Count that one, five points in just about four seconds of game time have gone by. Well, nine point game, 48 seconds left. There's still lots of time here. And Joey, this, <laughs> it's like we're watching 2022 all over again. Southeastern really struggled shooting the ball in that game. A strong start to the second half gave SNU a lead they held on to. And a late Southeastern push over the last few minutes with Adam Dorsky speeding that ball into the front court. Got things a little tighter than SNU would have liked. The Crimson Storm still came out with the win, but... This feels all too familiar, not to mention the fact it was the 4-1 game in that one as well. Yeah. Big, big opportunity for Southern Nazarene. They don't want to let this go away. Tell you what, let's take a break. We'll come back in just a moment here as you are watching semifinal Saturday, Crimson Storm with the advantage. One of the fastest growing universities in the state and the region, Southeastern Oklahoma State University has classes for bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Over 45 degree programs are available with in-person, online, and hybrid options. With a legacy of excellence dating back to 1909, our dedicated faculty and staff are here to make your legacy a great one. Your future starts here at Texoma's University. Edelmeyer looking to find someone. Finds Coleman at the last moment near steal and passing ahead. 2 on one Slaymaker to the hole and in. Double digit lead once again. Cluett strong to the basket. Can't get that one to fall. No contact, no foul. There is the foul after the fact. Slaymaker gets position, gets the board, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. And Belton Southeastern was the only team in the Great American Conference ranked in the regional rankings in that number 10 spot. Every team on the men's side was looking for an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, not trying to rest on any laurels from the regular season because they simply weren't there. Need to get into championship Sunday and win tomorrow. Southern Nazarene doing its part to punch its ticket Game two to follow this one, Arkansas Tech and Northwestern. Same scenario in that one. Have to win to keep the season alive. Southern Nazarene, the Crimson Storm. Their season looks to advance at least one more day. Burns has that one come up short. The long board will go over to the Southeastern bench. And the Crimson Storm now 26.8 seconds away from celebrating here in Shawnee. God, Joey. What a job by B.J. Foster. This team was one in five in conference play at one point. And here they are, 25 seconds away from the Great American Conference Championship game. Team that's won eight of their last 11 games coming into today. They were the better team all game. Outside of really two first half runs, in the first half by Southeastern, SNU was the better team. They were the better team for sure for the entire second half. And man, when when you replace somebody who's been at a school for a long time, Adam Bohach there 15 years in Bethany, BJ Foster, you know, coming out from Cal State, Stan Marcos, you know, not familiar in the area, having to win over a fan base. 
Well, he took a bunch of guys who've never played together before and turned them into a team that is going to play for a conference tournament championship and a spot in the NCAA tournament in year one. Sternberger gets in the way, commits the foul. Mentioned that if Southern Nazarene kept this game in the 70s, it would work to the Crimson Storm advantage, Southeastern in the 70s. Southern Nazarene scoring into the 80s today. Points merely cosmetic, I believe, at this point in time as the Crimson Storm, just a matter of seconds before they get to celebrate and start looking at film for, or maybe stick around just a little bit. Then we need just to look at film right at the bat. Just watch the next game. Man, if you're, if you're Kelly Green, Ryan Quinn over there on the Southeastern sideline, guy, you've got to be sick to your stomach number one team in the preseason. You finally get the ball rolling with that 11 game win streak over January and February. You, it, all this success for Southeastern over the past five, six years, two regular season championships, no tournament championships though. And once again, you fall to kind of your arch nemesis, Southern Nazarene in the GAC tournament. Burns last shot won't go, Zetchich will. Run out the clock. And he'll dribble off the time. Zero's on the board. First time in the men's side that the top seed will not move on. We have the top four seeds through the quarterfinals. And Southern Nazarene breaks that trend today. The Crimson Storm with a decisive 14-point win over the Savage Storm here in Fire Lake Arena. We'll have an opportunity to talk about this one just a little bit more as we wrap things up from game number one. We'll be back here on the GAC Sports Network. So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself until they focus on you. Or Juana's way. Why be one champ when I want to be two? Be like you, Sra. Let nothing destroy your dreams. Screw fate. Or maybe you beat doubt one step at a time, like Johnny. What about Zoe? Never satisfied. Not with trophies or stunts. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got. To get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? Fire Lake Arena has seen its first upset on the men's side of the bracket as the Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm come away with a 14-point victory and looking good on all cylinders. Southeastern made a couple of offensive runs in the first half, really could not find the basket in the second half. Strong defense on the part of the Crimson Storm to add to Southeastern's offensive woes. Brendan Burns made trips to the basket going up strong, trips to the free throw line after that, but a host of Crimson Storm players doing their part. And we're about to get to hear from one of those, as you see Benno Zetchich right there. He was good from the inside, good from the outside, long range, short range, defense. Benno Zetchich, Zetchich doing it all today and for Southern Nazarene, We'll get a chance to talk with him as Samantha Roop gets to visit with our player of the game here. Benno, congratulations. How are you feeling right now? I feel I feel all right. You know, I'm a uh, we want it all. So so we're not satisfied yet. That's for sure. Standing behind your bench a couple of times, Coach Foster talking about the defense and how the defensive needs to improve. What did y'all do to play more defense during the game? We've been working on this since uh, day one. Defense has always been our emphasis, especially Coach Foster. He's a he's a defensive coach, and uh, we put it together towards the end of the season, and it's showing on the court. Having two losses against Southeastern through the season, playing them just a month ago, so you had a whole month to improve. What did you need to improve on to get the win today? 
Uh, well, we knew we had to uh, take away the uh, the point guard. Uh, I think his name is Burns. Yeah, he's a he's a key player for them, and we knew if we uh, could take him away as much as possible, uh, we'd be all right. So a shout out to him. He's a great player, but uh, we got it done. Championship game tomorrow. What do you have to say? Nothing. We just we, we gonna show y'all we gonna show y'all what new basketball about, and we gonna get this dub. Whoever whoever wins this game right here, we gonna give us one. Benno, congratulations. Joey, back to you. All right. They're going to give it to him. They're going to give it to him. Oh. Tomorrow. We'll see who wins the game and uh, who will be on the receiving end. Benno Zetchic there coming away. Big game for him. He was the leader, team high, 10 points. Zetchic and for Southeastern Kyle Leslie with a game high 12 points. All of his points, by the way, though, in the first half. Field goal percentage for Southern Nazarene, 54%. You mentioned it at the end of the game, Luke, 37% from the field for Southwestern. That's just not going to cut it for them. No, not at all. And Southeastern, because of turnovers and offensive rebounding, they got 13 more shots than SNU. And for a team that shoots 49% from the field as a team, you'd think that the roles would be reversed. A 14-point win for Southeastern. But SNU's defense came to play this afternoon, and they're playing in the title game. Southeastern falls as the number one seed. Southern Nazarene moving on, and we will have game two coming up in less than half an hour here. It's the two seed and the three seed. Arkansas Tech, regular season champions, taking on the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers. Back in a moment on the GAC Sports Network.